Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Emily Bowie. Thank you so much for being here. In today's video, we're going to be having a review of Universal Audio's brand new plugin, their Capital tube compressor. If you like these kind of videos, please hit that like button. They tell me that it helps with the algorithm. I am not convinced, but maybe you can prove me wrong. So I don't know hit the like button and let's see what happens. And don't forget to pick up your free guide, 21 of my best mixing tips right there. Go to the website or just simply click on the link in the description and check out some other things in the description. I've got uh, a lot, some other free courses that are available there, all links going directly there, as well as some of my favorite products, plugins, and a link that you can sign up for the weekly newsletter. And when I do these types of reviews, I like to answer a couple of main questions that I always have. Number one, am I gonna make some money back on this product because it's not the cheapest plugin. It is actually listed as one of the most expensive plugins that Universal Audio has. So by owning this, am I going to be able to offer a more premium sound for my clients? Number two, am I going to further my knowledge and experience by using this plugin and learning how to use it and learning all the components that come along with it and how it's enhancing my mixes or masters. And number three, am I actually going to produce better sounding mixes or masters with this plugin? Now that can be for me personally or for my clients. So with that being said, let's just take a little bit of an overview of what the Capital Tube Compressor actually is. Now you can go to the Universal Audio website, of course, and read all of the nice descriptions that they have of this new tube compressor, but I did want to touch on a couple of things here. The Capital Mastering Compressor comes from the sound of their CM5511 tube compressor. They have said that this has been on thousands of hit records, although I wish they would have actually listed some here. Uh, there are some of the labels, such as Motown, I believe that they say that this comes from, but I did a little bit of a little bit more digging on here and that they only had four of these tube compressors made and this hardware was actually inspired by the Fairchild 670 and Gates Stay Level Tube Limiter. So maybe getting the stereo format from the Fairchild and then some of that nice mastering limiting from the Stay Level. Not bad pieces of hardware to make your own mastering tube compressor. Now it is called a mastering compressor, but anytime that you have a stereo compressor, try it on anything because this is not just going to be for mastering. This is going to be for mixing as well as bus compression, for drums, anything like that. It's going to give it that nice analog tube sound and I can't wait to try it out. So let's get some audio running through it. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is just try this out on an unmastered finish mix. This is not one that I mix, but I think it's a pretty good song just to see what this stereo tube compressor can do. And let's just use it as its namesake for right now, the capital tube mastering compressor. And really, let's just go ahead and set it into default here and see what it does just running a mix through it. Okay, so first impressions, right off the bat, what I'm hearing is maybe a little excitement, a little bit of an enhancement in the mid, upper mid, maybe, in that kind of, I don't know, 1,000 to 1K, 2K, 3K area. It's a little bit of a lift, a little bit of enhancement. Uh, I really feel some separation with everything. So that's really nice. And I haven't tweaked any of the knobs here. So I don't know. Let's, uh, let's see what we've got. This is first, let's take a look at the attack here. Cause that's what I'm going to be focusing on is attack release and threshold really on this type of compressor. So we're at just at a zero on the threshold. So we're probably not getting much on the actual limiting. So we've got a slow attack and this is a fast release. So kind of one of those standard things that some people like, but let's see what happens when we move these things around a little bit. So let's change the attack. 
I'm assuming that the MS means maybe medium slow and then medium, medium fast. Okay, yeah, probably so. And then let's pull back a little bit on that. Sounds kind of cool. Yeah, that enhancement. You know, when you when you find a plugin that can do a couple of things all at once great separation, but also gluing everything together with the compression. I really, really like that. Now, another thing that I'm just now seeing is an LUFS and a DBFS meter here. So that's really, I appreciate that a lot. All right, so let's get to a little bit of a louder section here. So obviously when you put it in a bypass, it gets a little bit quieter because we, we have bumped the output up a little bit, but it also kind of falls apart a little bit. Like just listen to how it just kind of loses its life and it just kind of um, deflates a little bit. So here's with, without the tube compressor and then I'm gonna bring it in. You can really hear the background vocals come in. Everything's kind of circulating around the vocal. It doesn't just sound flat, it sounds three dimensional. And this is just one plugin. Yeah, having that, having everything come around the vocal and, and give us that really nice stereo image, that's what you want. That's what you want in a stereo compressor, especially something that you would want to put on an entire mix. So, you know, you can go through all of these. There's a ton of examples. They've got an entire video on the website, on Universal Audio's website, that you can go through all these and listen to it on different sources, different styles of music. It's not really what I want to focus on because there's so much of that out there. We want to know, is this going to add value back into our own mixes or those of our clients? Is this something that's going to give me more experience, make me able to offer a more premium mix or master so that, you know, we're, we're all in this to, to make a living, right? Or to make some extra money. So is this something that is an investment? Is it something that is actually worth buying the money that you put in Am I going to get that in return? So let's keep going. Uh, I don't just master things. I mix them as well. So let's see what this sounds like on a drum group here, a drum bus. I've got just a very, very simple acoustic overhead snare, one snare mic, one kick mic. You know, this is a very simple home recording many, many moons ago, but let's see if this is something that can just enhance something that has no plug-in on it whatsoever very inexpensive mics this is this is going to be basically your home re recording of a, a simple drum kit so i've got the preset here in drum bus input is quite up this is as far as the input can go on that and then I guess we're, is this, we're bringing it down. So let's try to bring it up a little bit.
So we're enhancing the kick drum, those tubes, those valves are beefing that up, but I'm also able to hear the high mids and the mids of the snare and just the, the higher ringing of the toms. Gets flattened out with it when it's out. So we've got that on a slow attack and a fast release. Let's see what it sounds like with those medium settings. Here's without. So we're tightening things up just a little bit. A little bit went a long way. So besides the normal threshold attack release, your inputs and outputs on a stereo compressor, or any compressor for that matter, we're also getting the option to put that in parallel style. We've got a headroom knob. There's a mono fold. Okay, so that's interesting. So how we can pull that up with a high pass filter on what we want to focus on as being mono. So if we wanted the lower end to be a little bit more tightened in the middle, we could do that with that mono fold knob. And we've got a gain knob and we have a shape that's connected with a saturator. So that's interesting. I wonder what that sounds like if we crank that up. Okay. So that's enhancing the sound. Saturators are great on drums. Anytime you think something's sounding a little bit dull or just, just not cutting through a lot, put a saturator on there, maybe even a little bit of a lo-fi plug-in. So you've got everything all on this stereo tube compressor plug-in. You can also connect this to a side chain if you want. Um, you've got some different metering options. You've got the input, you've got attenuation there, dual mono and okay, so here's where your side chain link is. And you've also got mid side. So a lot of things going on with this plugin. And so far it's only helped the audio that I'm running through it. And we've done a complete mix, an unmastered mix, and we've done a drum group. So I'm going to assume that this is working how it, how I would want it to work. Um, it's giving me, you know, great tube characteristics. It's giving me great stereo compression characteristics. I love the saturator on here. I think that really helps uh, add it's it's not adding that noise that a lot of plugins uh, tend to put on their plugins that I think are just, you know, I guess it's like a novelty thing. I, I don't want noise on my mixes or my masters. It's not the noise of hardware analog gear that gives me that vintage and, and nostalgic sound of those records from the 70s, which were probably the best sounding ones. I mean, let's be honest, we're kind of going backwards on that. It's not the noise that does that. It's it's the warmth of the tubes, the valves and the mic pre's or the compressors um, or even the microphones for that matter. I am a huge fan of tube and anytime a digital product such as a plug-in can achieve that achieve that tone and characteristic, that sound, to help our digital recordings get back to those, you know, amazing sounding records, then I think that we've got something special. I think that this plugin is something special. I think everything that I have talked about, adding the value, adding the experience and knowledge of having this in your tool belt for mixing and mastering projects, I think that it's going to add value back to your own music value into your client's music and therefore help you produce a higher quality, a very premium product to the masses that is going to be listening to these finished products. 
So the main question that we have to answer at the end of these review videos is, will I be buying this? Is this something that I need to own? I think if you have the money for it, this is something that is going to be more beneficial to you than not. So I'm definitely going to be incorporating this into my not only mixes, but masters. It may be something that I just start putting on my mix bus because I want to, I, I, I don't want to put anything on my master. I, the, the least amount of plugins that I can put on a master, the better, I think. Now, a lot of people really like to sculpt and shape in the mastering, but for me, I would rather have the mix sound the most premium that I can get it and mastering for me is old school. I'm just trying to get it to the proper level that I can keep all of that premium sound together. All right, y'all, that's it for now. Let me know if this is a plugin that you've already tried out, if you've already bought it, how it's helping your mixes and masters out. I would love to hear your thoughts and the results that you're getting. Also, don't forget your free gift. I've got 21 of my best mixing tips all in a PDF form that you can download right there. I've got the link in the description as well. And once you're there, there's a ton of free other things in my all access page. So don't forget to check those out as well. All right, y'all, thanks so much for being here and checking out the UAD Capital Tube Compressor with me. We'll talk real soon.